1.19 The Wild Update is adding alleys into Minecraft. In this video, learn how to find, tame, and use these adorable new pets. So how do you actually find an alley in Minecraft 1.19? Well, you want to go to either a woodland mansion or a pillager outpost, but I would say that a woodland mansion is probably the best place to find this new alley mob. Alleys only generate in with a structure, they can't actually spawn anywhere naturally. But let's go find where they are in the Woodland Mansion without getting killed by this Vindicator. So in Woodland Mansions, they generate in the existing prison structure. Now just looking at this, I do think they've updated this a bit. I don't remember there being the bars here or the andesite. And in every single jail cell, there's a chance for one to three alleys. So there'll be at least one alley in every one. But let's say in this one, it looks like there are three. Whereas if we go over to this one here, there may only be... Oh, this one has three as well. But let's say this one over here may only have two. Yeah, it looks like there's only two in here. Actually, no, there's a third in there as well. We got very lucky with this one. And this one here just has one alley. So there's definitely some differences. Now be aware once you've opened this up, the alleys will definitely start to escape. And they are not a hostile mob, although neither are they necessarily automatically tamed to you. But thankfully, this is the easiest mob to tame. But either way, if you find a woodland mansion, there is a large amount of alleys here. And just considering that there's oftentimes multiple jails in each woodland mansion, you could find 25 plus alleys in every one, which I really like as it kind of gives the woodland mansion some purpose again. It really makes it a much more desirable structure to raid. So the other place you'll find the alley is at the pillager outpost, as you can see right here. They're trapped in these cages. Now sometimes there's even an iron golem in these cages, but you can see here these cages now generate with one to three alleys in them, and also at the top of them you can see that that is covered up there. So if we go over here, you'll notice this one has two alleys as well, and they can't escape out of this, so we basically have to break this open to get them out. Whereas, of course, in the Pillager Outpost Jail, there was the door we could just open. And so these are the two ways you find alleys in Minecraft 1.19. Just be aware in both of them, of course, there's a lot of the hostile pillagers. So you've now rescued some alleys from a prison built by the pillagers, or from the pillager outpost. How do you tame these? All you have to do is grab out any item. It could be a torch, an emerald, a stick, a wooden plank, whatever you want. And go up to the alley and right click on them. Now that alley is tamed to you. And basically what will happen is once you've given it an item, it will just follow you around. So for instance, we're going to run over here, and they're actually quite quick, so you don't have to worry too much about them losing you. And you can see that alley is chasing me, compared to the other ones that are just sitting over there. Now this alley will follow you within 64 blocks, so if we went really, really far away it wouldn't follow me. But since it consistently moves to go after you, there's not too much of a worry of this. Also, you definitely know this alley is tamed to you, as it will not follow any other players while it has your item. As as well as that if you try and punch it, it is not able to be done. You can try as much as you like, and it's actually cool that this is in the game because there's a lot of other mobs like your cats, your dogs, that you technically could kill, unfortunately. But with the alley, you cannot hurt it while it is tamed to you. And if you need to for any reason, you can just right click on it with a lead, and thankfully alleys are leadable mobs, so you can bring that around that it almost looks a little bit like a balloon since it usually floats above you. But either way, that's another way that you can move around this mob, especially if it's tamed to you. But let's say you want it to not be tamed to you, you could still move around this way. But it is certainly not necessary, as they are very good at following you around. Although it doesn't seem like they'll try and actively go underwater if you're there. So you've found an alley, you've tamed an alley, but how do you use an alley? Well, basically whatever item you've given it, it will try and find more of those around the world. For instance, this alley here has a jungle log in its hand. Now unfortunately this does not mean that it can just break any jungle log and grab that. However if we break the jungle log and that item is now there, you'll notice these alleys will try and come and get it. And whatever one successfully did will come back and throw the item to me. And you will get the you've got a friend in me advancement which I think is pretty cool. Now of course generally it's not useful for that application as of course when you would break this you would just pick it up. What it can be very useful for is things like when you're fighting mobs at night. Let's say you're fighting them and a mob drops a certain item, like a zombie drops a piece of rotten flesh. And that piece of rotten flesh can be picked up by the alley. 
Now a bit of information of exactly how they work. They have two different inventory slots. The first slot I call an information slot, which is basically the first item you've given to them. This just tells them what they should be looking for. And the second slot is their storage slot. This is what they can pick up. So for instance, let's throw down some emeralds, as I think one of these alleys here has an emerald in its hand. It can pick up all six of these emeralds I've thrown on the ground. In fact, it can at this point pick them up instantly. Now sometimes they get a little bit distracted or they get a little bit stuck in things, but you can see they'll generally tend to grab it. So this one comes here, it grabs them. I can kind of run away from it if I want to, but it will try and chase me now that it has those. And it will not wait to try and come over here and throw them at me. Now, unfortunately, it sometimes misthrows, but the good news is that if it does, it'll just pick up those items again. You can see it's throwing them at me now. Let's see what happens because we haven't picked those up. It's going to pick them up again and keep throwing them at me until I have them all back. So their secondary storage slot has a full 64 items it can hold. But of course, if you give it something like an axe or a sword, it will only give you one more because it can only pick up one more if it finds them. And of course, with the Ender Pearls, it would only stack to 16, as would a standard one slot in your inventory. Now, let's say we've decided we do not want this alley to pick up emeralds anymore. Thankfully, it's not stuck like that permanently. Simply right click on them when you have an empty slot in your hotbar, just like this. And you can see here that alley now does not have that item in its hand. But be aware that alley is also now untamed to you. So let's say we give it this piece of light gray wool, like we did the other alleys. Now it is tamed to us again, but the alleys are the only mob in the game that can be untamed and tamed again, especially by multiple players. So just be aware of that when changing the items around. You could, let's say, remove an item for an alley. It could just go flying around. It might be hard to find it again. Well, they do generally tend to stay rather low down when they're flying. Now once it has its information item, it will look within a 32 block radius around it to find more items of that type. Generally, this tends to be 32 blocks around the player, as when the player is walking around, the alleys will follow it. So let's say we drop down all these jungle logs onto the ground a little bit further away from where the alleys are, because we've been walking quite fast here. We'll just throw them all here on the ground, just one by one. We can see here all the alleys will come and kind of pick them up. And once they pick them up, then they will try chasing me to throw those items back. And so if there's any items within that 32 block radius, they will pick them up for you. Now once an alley has thrown items to you that it picked up, there is a 3 second timer where it can pick up no other items. The reason for this is it could very easily get into an infinite loop where it's basically just throwing items up into the air and picking up its same items again. And so to avoid that, the alleys have this three second cooldown timer. We can actually show that off right here. We'll get this alley here to pick up all the logs. It'll throw them to me. I'll throw these back. Notice that alley does not go after those logs. The other one does, because it was in its three second cooldown. But what if you want it to return items to something that is not you, maybe to a hopper? Well, you can do that as well with the alley, and you can even use them in storage systems. I'll show you how to do that right now. So to do that, you need a note block now if we ring this note block here or hit it there, you'll notice those particles go from the note block and they kind of fly around to each one of the alleys. Basically, any alley within range of this note block will be sent the signal from the note block and they'll then be that alley's favorite note block and it'll return any items it grabs to it for the next 30 seconds. So for instance, I will throw these on the ground. Let's watch an alley pick them up. And what will happen is they will not bring those items to me. They will bring them to the note block. You'll notice it does it right there. Now, of course, it's rather inaccurate with that. The reason why I put those trapdoors there is so that it does not by accidentally put them on top of the note block. What you may notice here is it's rather inaccurate with throwing those items there. The good news is that if it is inaccurate with an item, then it will simply pick it up again and throw them in there. You'll notice that last LA gave me the block. That's because that note block was rung more than 30 seconds ago. So there's many different ways of setting up something like this. Of course, the more hoppers you have around the note block, the better. If we were to remove these trap doors here and try the same experiment again, and you'll notice most of the jungle logs did end up into the chest there. We can see the results. We'll just ring that, make those little signals go out to the alleys. We will then throw these jungle logs on the ground all the way around here. Let's watch the alleys come and pick them up. And they've now run over here, and they're throwing them there. Now you can see what I'm talking about when they are throwing them on top of the note block. However, the good news is that by just putting a trapdoor on top of there, 
that generally will get rid of any issues, but just be aware of course having any item on top of a note block will make it not work, so you cannot do that. But what you can do is have a trapdoor just off the side of it, and that can give you an effective way to stop them from going and putting the blocks in the wrong area. So that's how you have them deliver them to an alternative location. And all you have to do to make this constant, not have to ring the note block again, is simply put a little timer or a little clock up to this. They'll make this ring again and again. For instance, two observers facing each other, then facing this. And that'll just ding on and off, and that'll make them consistently stay there. Or other little repeater clock might work. I've even seen some systems people have set up where they have alleys in a row going into their item sorter, because alleys can sort non-stackable items like swords, which most mobs cannot and they're incredibly useful for lots of sorting system designs. Now you may be wondering why did Mojang call this mob the alley? Kind of seems like an interesting word, maybe the alley or the alley, one of those two. Well, the reason why is that the word alley means to relieve or alleviate, sort of like some mob that will help you and will make it a lot easier for you to play the game. This is actually contrasted to the mob that looks very much like the alley, the vex, and vex means to anger or worry. So it's quite interesting that there's sort of a good and bad side to this type of mob. You'll notice this alley here is holding a totem of undying, and shockingly enough, alleys can use totems of undying. So you'll see the TNT blow up there. Now this alley was not hurt by them, it's rather stubborn. If it was hurt by it, then it would use that totem of undying, not unlike a fox can. And because of their unique ability to be tamed by the item that's in their hand, they are the only mob in the game to be able to be untamed and also retamed by the same player, and also the only mob in the game that's able to be untamed and then retamed by a separate player. Now though I cannot kill these alleys because they are my pet alleys, if let's say someone else killed one of these alleys, all they can drop is the item that is in their hands. They drop no items, they drop no experience, and considering the fact that these are not a renewable mob, in fact probably one of the only non-renewable mobs in the game, killing these is an incredibly bad idea, as they're definitely worth a lot of time, and their diamond texture is not necessarily untrue to their worth. Since they're such a cool and useful pet, I'm sure these will sell for many diamond blocks. One last interesting thing about the LA, if it does happen to get hurt, it will regenerate one heart of health every second, and it has a maximum of 10 hearts of health. So let's say right now this has full health. If we were to hurt it, you'll notice it does get hurt there because it's now not tamed to us. But thankfully it will regenerate all of its health in that time. We can give it an item again and it will be right back to normal. And that's nice because the Mojang developers definitely added a lot of features to the alley which will make it very hard to kill, which is a very important plus considering how rare this mob is. And finally it adds a lot more use to the pillager outpost and to the woodland mansion. And that's enough about the LAs. See you in the next video.